a good scripture for us to uh, springboard off of this morning. Actually, Joan gave that as a word last Sunday morning. She felt like God had put that in her heart to give to someone here. And she doesn't do that very often. I've never seen her do it, probably a few times in my whole ministry. So when she gives something, you best listen because she hasn't done it up to me time. So it's, it's a for real thing when she does it. But I didn't know that that's what God would lead me to a few days later for today as well. Uh, Galatians 6, 9, and Paul says, And be not weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. The discourse that Paul is speaking here, uh, he's speaking of sowing to the flesh or sowing to the spirit. You sow to the flesh, you reap corruption. You sow to the spirit, you, you reap great reward and great blessing. And that's what the discourse of what Paul is giving here. Be not weary in well-doing. For in God's time, in due season, we shall reap, we shall be blessed, we shall receive an ultimate harvest if we faint not. Um, the message I like, W. Peterson's message, and I asked Deborah about that, by the way. I said, Deborah, I, I, I'm not well versed in Greek and Hebrew, and I, I took s some lessons, but I'm not versed in it like I need to be or should be. I said, I have to rely on my one Bible that has 26 translations, and I, I rely on modern and I, the message. And she says, well, listen, the message is thought for thought, not word for word, but it still can help you bring out what you're trying to bring out. And so she kind of encouraged my heart with that. But the message says, let us not grow tired of doing good, for unless we throw in our hands, the ultimate harvest is assured. How many of you ever feel like throwing up your hands <laughs> when you're in the middle, when you're in between? John the Baptist in Matthew 11, which is not on your notes, in Matthew 11 of chapter 11, 1 through 6, John the Baptist is in prison. And he's sort of this place we might call sort of in between, a difficult place. And he sent a message through the disciples to, to the Messiah Christ. Are you really the Messiah or should we look for another? I mean, when you're in the situation John the Baptist was in, maybe he was there because he was Baptist. No, that's not why he was there. But if you're in a situation like he was in, he is this in this place of being in between. And he asked, do we look for another? And Christ said, send this message back to him. Blessed is he who is not offended in me. Yeah. Uh, one paraphrase that I read years ago of that, don't get upset with the way I do my business. God does his business. God knows how to do his business. And we're in a situation where we're waiting and we're suffering. Sometimes we wonder about the way he does his business. We may get offended pretty easily. And be not weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. How many do you know in your journey of faith, people that started the race the Christian race and now you look back and they're no longer in the race they're no longer in that race and that saddens us doesn't it God is still with us in our weariness somebody say amen, amen. God is still with us in our waiting, and God is with us in our sufferings. Marilyn Hickey, at least I know she said this, maybe others did, don't doubt in the dark what God said in the light. 
Sometimes you, when you're in the difficult place, you got to remember the good things that were spoken and the, the word that was given. There was 400 years, the silent years, between Malachi and Matthew. No prophet, no prophecies, no word from God recorded. I've met some believers and even recently told me they felt like it's been 400 years since they've heard from God too. <laughs> but in Galatians 4, 4, Paul said, in God's time, we have the prophecy that Christ comes forth of the Virgin Mary. In God's time, Christ was born. Conditions were precisely right. Whether it was political, economic, moral, religious time, it was the, even the roads that were built, the Roman roads were built with significant timing. The language was significant timing for Christ to be born and the word to go forth of his coming. How to live in the in-between. I just put a few things down for us to think about. You may have your own thoughts to add to what we have here this morning. Sometimes in between the night with tears. In Psalms 30 verse 5. Says weeping endures for a night. But joy comes in the morning. How many has ever known a loved one or yourself even to go to bed and be in concern? And even with tears, Carolyn, with tears, and see something happen during the night and joy come in the morning. In between conversion and spiritual maturity. As I said earlier, some people start, but don't continue. Don't grow. The word is grow. Walk. Work out your salvation. Grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But in between conversion and that road to spiritual maturity, some fall by the wayside. In between seed time and harvest time, you, you plant a seed of faith and you're looking for something to happen, something good to happen. And I know there's times that I planted a seed and I'm waiting for something to happen. And I'm tempted to want to go back and dig that seed up and see if the seed's still good. But how many knows if, if you plant a seed in your garden this spring and every week you go out there and dig it up and see if it's still there, I don't think you're going to have much of a harvest, right? In between seed time and harvest time, you have to wait upon the Lord and trust Him. In between listening for the voice of God and hearing the voice of God, that in-between time, are we going to hear from God? Uh, look at different stories in the Bible where the prophets were waiting to hear a word from God. I think uh, Jonah was waiting to hear from God and the people of Jonah's time where we haven't heard a word from God for a while and then God finally speaks to Jonah and says go to Nineveh well that wasn't what I wanted to hear wait all this time and he tells me to go to Israel's greatest enemies and even more in between listening for the voice of God and hearing the voice of God can be a difficult time. In between the dark days of bereavement and brighter days and a new future, you know, I've laid my father to rest, my mother to rest, and my brother. Five years ago, I went down, my brother was a pastor, 
uh, he was a little older than me, and went to take him out to eat in Laurenburg, and I said, where do you mean take you to eat? He said, Burger King. I said, I'll take you somewhere else better than Burger King. Well, I'll take him to Burger King, and while I'm ordering his Burger King, he went to see the king sitting at a table over there. Really, Joan was with him. He began to tremble. He had, God had extended his life for seven or eight years miraculously. He had died several times in the hospital, and God extended his life seven or eight years. It was miraculous how that happened. But she called, quick, come, you know, and by the time he hit the floor, he was gone. So he went to Burger King, but he went to see the king. That was really unusual. But we lay our loved ones to rest whom we love and we grieve for a period of time which is normal which is right my sister just a couple of years ago less than a year two years ago november yeah she left us and we were singing here you do all things glorious and i had my phone on vibrate and i was supposed to be called when she went she was supposed to maybe go that morning i already said my goodbyes she loved the lord and as, as ed was leading you do all things glorious my phone vibrated in my pocket standing there and i knew she was already gone but he does all things glorious, doesn't he? In between bereavement and after we grieve a period of time and God brings us new life after our grieving, it's a, it's a difficult time. In between the promises of God and actually experiencing the reality of those promises, 2 Corinthians 1.20, Paul says, all the promises of God are yea and amen. I'm here glad that all the promises of God are yes and amen. So be it, right? But sometimes we read the promises of God and coming to the place where we actually experience those things in our lives is, is an in-between time. And of course, the big one of all, I mean, the real big one, is between Christ's first coming and Christ's second coming. And one that I missed, in between being down and being up. It can be a difficult time. Burnout to renewal can be a difficult time. 30 years ago, after I built a church, and... Um, started Teen Challenge here in this area and had to go to court for six months because some people thought we shouldn't start Teen Challenge where we started it and had to deal with six court, six months of court trial and going through a, two building programs and a, a building, two buildings over a period of time and man I was I was burnt out. Went for a while without preaching. I was done, burnt out. But in that time, we can either experience some difficult things because we allow the enemy to lie to us, or we can experience some growth when our Heavenly Father works in our lives. And like I said, the big one in between the first coming of Christ and the second coming of Christ, we wait upon His coming. And I listed some things that we have to do if we're going to be able to make it through with any kind of victory at all in between, either whether we're in between or whether we're not, but especially when we're in between, we need to do some of these things to keep ourselves going with the Lord. First of all, we must never give up or give in. No matter what. I, when I was burnt out, I just absolutely, there was times I even didn't want to go to church for heaven's sakes, but I did anyway. But I didn't sometimes feel like going. I was so tired. 
I had gone through so much. You can't never, you cannot ever give up or give in. One of my favorite scriptures that helped me in my lifetime in Hebrews 10.35, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Cast not away your confidence, for it has great recompense of reward. William's translation says, Do not throw away your confidence. You must never give up your confidence, William's translation says. No matter what, for it has a rich, vast reward. How many has ever been in a place where you just wasn't sure if you could go another step? Never give up. I think Balvado, the great coach, is that his name? The, the great NC basketball coach? What, what was his name? Balvano. Balvano. I thought I had it right. The V, the big V. That was his motto, never give up, right? The foundation that he started, yeah, never give up. And you must never stop believing in miracles, no matter what. Mark 9, 23 says to those who believe, all things are possible. Listen, the only thing that's kept me going in ministry is I believe in possibilities with God and faith. I believe in it. I, I'm balanced in faith. I, I believe in walking in a balance with God in faith. But I believe in possibilities. Matthew 19, 26. With God, all things are possible. The discourse there was, uh, it's going to be difficult for a rich man to get through the eye of the needle. And the disciples is, well, that's, that seems impossible. And, of course, Jesus makes this incredible declaration in verse 26 he says but with God all things are possible amen never give up or give in you must never stop believing in miracles no matter what happens in your life you got to believe that God is the God of miracles and possibilities and we must trust God no matter what I know you know that. Verse 5 and 6 of what you have listed there is the key verse. Verses. Trust in the Lord. You know this. You can quote this. With all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. One translation says, depend not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Another translation says, Do not rely on your own insight. Do not rely on your own insight. People, I, I, I tell you what, sometimes I think I can figure it out, and I think I know best, and I, I think I know I'm smart enough to know. Then I realize, no, no, no. I'm not quite that smart. Not at all. Trust in the Lord no matter what. You must wait on the Lord. That's not easy. You must wait on the Lord. Isaiah 40, 31, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The Amplified says, Those that wait on the Lord expect, look, and hope in Him. Those that wait on the Lord expect, look, and hope in Him. You got to wait on the Lord. You can't just, well, I'm going to have to take matters into my own hands. Yeah, I've tried that before, and that don't work out too well. Uh, anybody with me here? 
take matters in your own hands, yeah, it don't work out so well. You must keep looking for the Lord's return no matter what. No matter what's going on right now in this crazy mixed up world. Hebrews 10, 28, B, in the latter portion of verse 28, unto them who look for him shall he appear a second time. Well, every morning we get up, we need to be looking for the second return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. Yes. Don't be looking for everything else. Don't be looking for problems. You'll find them no matter what. Don't be looking for them because you'll run into them anyway. Be looking for the Lord's return. Unto them who look for him shall he appear a second time without sin unto salvation. You must keep loving the Lord's return. You got to love it. You got to be looking for it and loving it. I, you know, I, I Lot's wife wasn't loving in the escape, wasn't she? She looked back, and that's where her heart and treasures were, evidently. You must keep loving the Lord's return. 2 Timothy 4, 8b. Unto all them also who love his appearing shall he appear. One translation says, who have set their hearts on his coming appearance. When you get up in the morning, you set your heart. You, you look and you love his appearing. You set your heart looking for his appearing. And I'll put another one here. You must stay ready for the Lord's return no matter what. Luke 12, 40. Be you therefore ready for the Son of Man comes in an hour when you think not. Someone said, who is the Lord coming for? Is he coming for the Methodist or the Baptist or the full gospel people? No, he's coming for those who look, those who are loving, and those who are ready for his appearing. Amen? Yes. Stay ready. Look for him. Love his appearing. And we could add some more, but this is, this is important. As we are waiting on the Lord's return, we've got to keep busy doing God's will and work no matter what. I'll tell you the truth. You've got you to gotta ask God what he has for you to do. You've got to listen to what God wants you to do. Listen, when God speaks for you to do something, and from the time that he speaks you to do something, and the time you actually do it, that's where the enemy can get in the middle there and really play a lot of havoc and play, play on your mind and say, well, did he really say for you to do it? You know you're not capable of doing that, and I, uh, on and on and on. I believe, if not, I'm not mistaken, um, David Jeremiah has made some statements of what I'm going to give you. And I've heard some other similar ones as well. But Matthew 28, 19 and 20, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, teaching all those things, observing all those things that I have taught. And I think David Jeremiah said, the great commission and the great commandment makes great Christians and great churches. Amen. Are you with me? The great commission and the great commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, mind, and strength. The great commission, go ye into all the world. The great commandment, love the Lord your God, makes great Christians and great churches. God is always speaking and revealing himself to us. But there comes a time we need to silence the noise in our own heads so we can hear. Even if we have to wait for it, it's worth hearing what God has to say. Joe and I both love Psalms 46. It's a great psalm. And verse 10 is such a great verse. Be still and know that I am God. 
I don't know where all your journey has been and where you will go until the Lord comes, until you go to be with Him. But sometimes we feel like we're caught in the middle. We're somewhere in that place of waiting, sometimes suffering for the Lord to bring something to our lives. I want us to do, a, do something this morning. I want you to look at your notes, and I want us to do this in unison together. And we'll start with our bullets there if we could. And we'll add no matter what to everyone. I'm supposed to have added that to this one, but I, I got excited and forgot to do it. Okay, are you ready? You must never give up or give in, no matter what. Somebody say amen. amen. You must never stop believing in miracles, no matter what. I don't care how bad things get. You still got to be believing that God is God of miracles and He's the God of possibilities. No matter, no matter how crazy things look or get. You must trust God no matter what. It's, I know it, it may be some crazy stuff going on, but you got to trust Him. Uh, you know, there was something... Oswell Chambers, Oswell Chambers, the great, very prolific writer, he said, he said these words, the root of all sin is a suspicion that God's really not good. The root of all sin is a suspicion that God may not be really good. See, if the enemy in that in-between time can make you even doubt the goodness of the Lord in that difficult space, space in between, then it can open up a lot of bad things, not good things. Okay, let's go to the next page. You must wait upon the Lord no matter what. <laughs> Don't take matters into your own hands. You just got to wait on Him. And that waiting is not just sitting on the beach at St. Thomas and in a lounge chair. That's not what he's talking about. I won't get into that, but... You must keep looking for the Lord's return, no matter what. Come on. You must keep looking for the Lord's return, no matter what. No one, no matter what Fox News said yesterday. You've got to keep looking for His return. Well, maybe I should say, no matter what CNN said yesterday. <laughs> that may be more appropriate. Okay. You must keep looking for the Lord's return, no matter what. You must keep loving the Lord's return, no matter what. You must stay ready for the Lord's return, no matter what. You must keep busy doing God's will, no matter what. It may not be easy when God speaks to you to do something. Don't let the enemy get in there and in the in-between time of him speaking it and you doing it, he can play with your mind. You got to, if he tells you to do something, you go do it. Fill the water pots with water. What? Mary says, my son tells you to do something, you go do it. I was preaching in, in uh, Salisbury on Just Do It, the uh, Nike commercial. And, and one tech guy, he, he raised his hand when I was preaching on Just Do It. He said, yeah, preacher, it's, you can find it, the, the, the semblance of it, 38 times in the Bible. This guy was real quick on his little computer. 38 times you can find something that relates to just, when the Lord God says, just do it. I want, let me do one more thing here. Do let's, let's do this. We got to do this commission. Great, the great. Are you ready? The great commission. Say it. The great commission and the great commandment makes great Christians and great churches. Now stand together with me, and I got to give you a little something else additional. 
did an interesting study, Justin. I, I need a, some time. I'd like to tell you about what we've done. We did a sprint through the Old Testament. Not, not hiking. We didn't go into a lot of depth. Just a sprint. What we did, and something that God just kind of led me to do, we, we, we found something that Rose Publishing published about a, a, an excerpt of each book of the Old Testament that gives you the who, what, when, where, why, and the key verse. And it was right on. It was spot on. And then what we companion that with is some, some chosen words from the Fire Bible commentary. And we put that together with the who, what, when, where, why, and the key verse. And then we, we put some very choice portions of the commentary of the Fire Bible for that particular book. And in other words, we finished with Malachi last Wednesday night. And people only have about 11 or 12 pages of paper that they can look through the Old Testament through a sprint and see what's there and spot the outline and boom, 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 boom. And we're doing the same thing this Wednesday night with the New Testament. But this 11 or 12 pages, you've got commentary that can quickly help you find anything you need to find in the Old Testament. It was, it's been a very exciting. And then after we do the sprint, then we'll go back to doing some hiking in the uh, books where you kind of spend more time and more detail. But this was interesting from Malachi Wednesday night. Let me give you this if I can. Uh, it was um, very, very telling in the book of Malachi. Commentary from the Fire Bible. When the, when the Jews returned to Jerusalem after being captive in Babylon, you know, they struggled. Now, about a hundred years later, they were facing the same issues and showing the same sort of unfaithfulness that had marked the nation throughout its history. You see, history sort of repeats itself if you don't learn from it, right? It's been said. This is an example of how easily humanity falls into the same sins and how slow they are to learn the lessons of history. But I just wanted to preface that for what I'm really wanting to give you. The people had become unbelieving and distrustful towards God. This plays right into what Oswald Chambers says. They doubted his love and his promises. They questioned his justice. They believed, they, see the enemy can make you believe anything. They believed there was nothing to be gained by obeying his commandments. Think about it. As their faith weakened, their worship became routine, lacking true respect and love for God. 